Luke 1:45 NLT. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Welcome back to She Who Believes the podcast. I am your host Vivian Bell and I am in the She Who Believes. So we are in the second week of the month of October and we are discussing community. And our scripture for this month, we are still going to be in Psalms 1, 1 through 2. And I'm reading this from the King James Version, and it reads as follows. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the sitteth in the seat of the scornful. That whole King James always gets you wrapped up, right? But in his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So last week we talked about watch your steps. Where are you walking? Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So we're breaking this down into week two, and we're gonna talk about standing still. Standing still. So this verse t- tells us do not stand in the way of sinners. So something the Lord showed me a couple of years ago when I was studying the scripture. And it was that the person who's standing still is not being obedient. Because God is, is, is going to be telling us to keep moving. He doesn't want us to be stagnant. He doesn't want us to become <clears throat> excuse me, procrastinators. He wants us to be obedient and to be quickly obedient, like to be immediate in our obedience, right? Because delayed obedience is what? Still disobedience, right? So if you're standing still and you're in a group of people standing still, now you're in a community of people that are being disobedient, that are stagnant, that are not walking in their purpose. I cannot walk in my purpose and be still at the same time. Now, this doesn't mean that there are not times where you get still and you let God tell you, you be still until he shows you the next step. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, a direct disobedience. Why is it important that we make sure that we are attached to or have people in our community that are obedient to God? Because they're gonna motivate us to walk in obedience. They're gonna call us out when we're not. They're gonna say, hey girl, you tripping. Hey girl, what's up with this book? Girl, what's up with you finishing this work? Hey, or, or they will check you and say, hey, this is not what God wants you to do at this very moment. Yes, he's giving you a thousand of, of, of ideas and visions, but this is not what God wants you to do right now. And people who are walking alongside you, walking with you, they're in the midst of their purpose. And together your purposes will align in some way, shape or form, even if their purpose is only to be in purpose in their purpose while you're in your purpose, which motivates you to stay in your purpose. I know that sounded nuts, but I won't say it to you again. Sometimes the people that are supposed to walk with us in our in certain seasons of our lives or throughout our entire lives, their purpose may not seem like it connects with our purpose at all. So like I have particular friends, right? Who I am, uh, again, a, a biblical uh, counselor, a life coach, a mental health coach, and a destiny strategist. They don't touch any of those things, but what they do is touch heaven. They are the ones who pray for me, they cover me, That they're walking in their purpose by being the mothers and the wives and the grandmothers and the book writers and all the things God called them to be, but also having my back. They are a community of women who will check me and say, hey, back up off that, don't do this, do that, or hey girl, what are you waiting on? Or say, hey, that, 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 that fear that has come to shake you, I came to knock that thing down. I came to kick down the wall that has kept you stagnant. You cannot be surrounded with people who are just standing still. Because I'm to tell you what the people who stand still does. They get bitter. They operate in unforgiveness. They are stuck in their past. They're telling, they're standing still, telling you the same stories that they've told you for the last 20 years some highlights from high school and not that you can't tell highlights from high school but if we're 45 65 75 35 25 and all we ever talk about is our past all we reminisce on is our past all we talk about is what happened to us in our past then that means we're not focused or open to walk in our present 
And that is not something or someone you need to be surrounding you. So while as we're looking at our community this month, we're looking at what God wants for us in this season of our lives. Who should I be around? Again, the word says, do not accept counsel of ungodly people. And I shared with you guys last week about when I find something that I know God's called me to or something that's important, like my love for marriage. I don't surround myself with people who will give me unwise counsel ungodly counsel so if a person or woman specifically spends her day and her time always talking negatively about her husband she will never ever be someone that i first of all take seriously if she gives me information or guidance on marriage um i won't accept that person because what i know is that our words create and that she continues to choose to dishonor her husband And that's not something I want to do. That's not a way I want to live my life. So now we've talked about um, accepting the counsel of the ungodly or not accepting it. And then also not standing in the way of sinners. Because see, if I'm standing still, and it's not just like, oh, okay, well, you're not committing adultery so I can hang with you. Or maybe you ain't in the club as much anymore. I can hang with you. That's not what it's talking about, to be honest with you. Yes, we don't want to be around people that are... um, living a life that's separate from ours like if we've been called we've been set apart we've been called away by god to live a godly and holy life right that doesn't mean perfect because none of us are perfect so we don't want to be like hey i'm in the club because i'm a um i came to share the lord with you no because before you know it you might be throwing back some um gray goose and cranberry juice um or something like that you understand what i'm saying but what i'm saying is this if a person is standing still Things that are sinful will become their nature. Gossiping, bitterness, anger, backbiting, um, just all kinds of other things. Or if I'm standing still and not walking in my purpose, I'm more tempted to be disobedient to sin. Um, And because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm not continuing to renew my mind in Christ. All of those things makes me not only stagnant, but makes me... um, prone to walk in sin, right? And I know you might think, well, I ain't walking in my purpose, so I'm a sinner. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, and when we're not in our purpose, when we're not aligned with the way God wants us to be aligned, then it is more, uh, we're more vulnerable to temptation and to sin. That's what I'm saying. That's what it is. Got a question about it. Email me at coachingbyvivianb at gmail.com. Uh, comment on this video on YouTube or any of the socials. I'll answer your question. I have no problem answering your question and giving you Bible to, to back up what I'm saying. So anyway, that has been this week's podcast. Um, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed she who believes. So again, if you have questions, you can email me at coachingbyvivianb at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at vivianbell.com. You can subscribe and get our weekly blog sent to you by email. You'll also get um, emails when we have new merchandise that comes out, um, new courses and all of those things. So follow us, stay connected with us and know that we are praying for you and we pray a most abundant and blessed week. God bless.